In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly and Andrew Fiore. The time has come again. The champion must And welcome to another edition of your favorite podcast, my favorite podcast, the coronavirus's favorite podcast, Defend Your Movie. <laughs> uh, I, I am one of your hosts, joined here by my wonderful uh, Rangers fan co-host, Andy Fiore, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go, Rangers. <laughs> nice to see you, Shawnee. We are having another Zoom edition, but we're bringing it back to the original format of the show. We're doing a matchup. We got one of our best buds to do the matchup with a super funny comedian. You know him from all over the place. Greg Stone, ladies and gentlemen. Woo-hoo. Hey, buds. Thanks for this, man. Uh, we were talking a little bit of how we're holding up with the corona. I think there's a lot of watching going on. Mm. I, uh, have you watched anything new during the corona, Greg? Or? Like, uh, I watched a ton of uh, – I've been watching a ton of TV. I've been watching old G.I. Joe episodes because they're just so much – they're so corny oh, and yeah, so they good. Just, didn't Hasbro or whatever the company is, they would just release them for free online or something? This is a crazy thing they said. They were like, we're releasing them for free on YouTube. But it's like this, there's this thing, Tubi, which is free, which has everything. So I'm like, yeah, you already did just on this thing that nobody knows about. Yeah, but they didn't – but it's not them that released it, right? Well, they would have the rights – Right, so like whoever has the rights to the cartoon, that Tubi type stuff, stuff is then just ripping it off, ripping it off and showing. It. You think Tubi's just running their own stealing it's system? Like, like a no frills YouTube, right? What is- <laughs> it's like Crackle. It's like one of those like, hey, we're a. Uh- oh, okay. So yeah, maybe they have the rights already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like they, like they, they are, they're playing ads. It's like a legit app. It's like when a show says, oh, we're going to Netflix, but they've been on Hulu for two years. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they were doing. Like, yeah, guys, you all, you've been out there for free already. Yeah, have um, you watched any movies during the break or no? The break. Well, yeah. I mean, I watched some movies that I'm like, I already knew I loved. Yeah, uh, I feel like that's the, it's like a comforting thing, right? Yeah, I, I rewatched Inception and Dark Knight uh, and Batman Begins. Oh, it's yeah. like unbelievable. It's so Christopher funny, Nolan. Dark, Dark Knight was on my list of last week. We did uh, uh, movies, like great movies to like cheer you up when you're in the, in, like, you know, depressed from this corona thing. Dude, I highly suggest watching Batman Begins. Uh, not first, but because it's it's Dark Knight. We all know is unbelievable, but Batman Begins. You forget how really it's phenomenal. it's a great movie. Yeah, yeah. great movie. There's, there's a whole camp of people that think it's the best one. Yeah, no. I mean it's it's the most like not Batmany Batman film. Why would you consider it not Batman? I consider it maybe it's one not of the Batman most for like a half of the fucking movie. See, I would argue that he's always Batman. He just I kind of I, I hate Scarecrow though. Him. I don't love Scarecrow. Oh, I loved him. Loved. I love the actor. So I good. I like Scarecrow, but not necessarily Cillian Murphy as the actor playing Scarecrow. Well, oh. Scarecrow, Scarecrow's a good. It's a good like starter villain for the series. I like yeah. the villain, just not the actor playing it. I should have amended that statement. Man, I I think he's unbelievable. He a good job of playing like a wormy guy, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Point in character, I think. Greg, also, I thought, Mm-hmm. I, not to jump back a little, I thought you were mad at me yesterday because uh, I listed my top five favorite GI Joes and I made up completely. Uh, I was so names. I was pretty mad. I threw the phone through my. I, I always a few phones I keep on the side for Shani, when you talk to me. Greg Greg <laughs> put out a tweet that said his top five GI Joe good guys, and then he listed like twenty of them. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> and also no one responded. Responded. No one liked the tweet. One person liked it. It was Andy. He just wrote a bunch of bullshit. Like, <laughs> hammerhead, finger toes. And I was like, you piece of shit. Craig wrote, you go, low light, beachhead, chuckles. And they're such, they're such weird names. Like, oh, my top five are Booze Cruise, Moana, <laughs> Jackie. You had some good it's ones. Like, it's a serious business. I know. I hated myself for being serious for one moment. Because I was like, Greg- oh, I'd love to talk G.I. Joe. And I wrote, uh I agree. Greg just wrote back. I can tell he's mad. He just wrote back, whatever, man. <laughs> I was going to write, fuck you. But I was like, no, whatever, man. You don't want to do this. You don't want to. You don't want to. 
No one cared about the tweet. I was so like ready to talk about GI Joe with anybody, and no one wanted to talk about it. <laughs> That's really when you go for the jugular with Greg. When it's like that kind of stuff, where he like, <laughs> <laughs> becomes like a like a maniac. Shut the fuck up. But then I texted you our favorite uh, Planet of the Apes moment from the originals. I, I sent him. I finally found the clip online. Me and Greg did a uh, a road gig at a country club a couple years ago. Do you remember? It was the Jack and Jill. <laughs> Yeah. Have you ever done one of those funny? It's a bachelor party for the groom and the bride. I've done I've done that not at a country club, at like a like a, a celebration hall kind of place. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, essentially I never heard of this concept. I guess it's essentially yeah. to raise money for the wedding. Oh, I've heard yeah, I think I've heard this wasn't that, but I've heard of that. Yeah. And this was about as white trash as you could get. And me and the Greg brutal? did stand up outside under like a canopy. I want to say 40 minutes already, each. We, yeah, we, yeah. 40 we, minutes each? I swear it was so long. I don't remember, but it was like it was like 40 each. I swear. No, one of those drives home where you're just like, what the fuck was that? I don't know how we got there, but we kept on doing <laughs> We kept on doing it, Charlton Heston. It's actually one of those things that like ages really well because the story is so fun. Yeah. So we kept doing, you know, when Charlton Heston is looking, he's in, he's in one half of the jail and Nova is on the other side of the jail. And he kept yeah. going, Nova. I taught you I taught how to you. smile. <laughs> <laughs> I taught you how to smile. Were they just like an awful crowd? They were as good as a barbecue would be. Yeah. <laughs> Why would anyone do this? They were very nice they people. It? They were nice people. And like, it wasn't brutal, but it was like brutal because it wasn't a comedy club. It was just silly. And right. they tipped us. I'm pretty sure they tipped there's us. There's road gigs you can do that. Were, like, mine was when I did it with, I when Nick Cobb lived in New York. You guys know Nick Cobb. Yeah. Right? Yeah. One of the, the first road stuff I did, I owe him because he would take me to open for him on like uh, these random, he would get them from Gig Masters, that website. <laughs> and it would be all these random gigs where you like, you, you would bid on like how much they had to pay you. Like, oh, I'll do it for uh. this month. I'll do it this month. And we did some memorable gigs on that. We did, one of them was that joint bachelor, bachelorette party. And then one of them was a 50th birthday party at like an apartment complex in Jersey where the gag was, and they were actually good. They were a good crowd, but it looked like it was going to be a disaster because when we showed up, everybody was dressed like how the birthday boy dresses every day. So they were all in gray sweatshirts with jeans <laughs> and like, a, like fake mustaches, like looking like a like, joke. And it's like, oh, you couldn't have made this more inside. <laughs> have a roast where me and Nick, a random strangers, have to roast you. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> like you thought it was brutal, but they were actually pretty. They were good. They were actually pretty good. Yeah, I think people do it with the best intentions and are nice, friendly people, but oh. they just don't know how to produce a comedy. They don't know. It's like, oh. no, you need the right equipment. You need the right setting. You can't be out outside with background Absolutely. noise and kids running around. Dude, the worst one was that we did a Ferrari club in uh, in Maryland, in like uh, Annapolis, Maryland. Two things. One is it wasn't people who owned Ferraris. It was people who like saved up their whole lives and Correct. like bought Ferrari and lifelong were dream to own a Ferrari. They were renting it like every weekend. They would go on these drives and then meet up for a dinner. And then when we get there, Nick goes, "Okay, where's your audio setup?" I, uh, and the guy goes, "You told me you had a mic." And he goes, "I told you mine was broken. You said you would get one." He goes, "No, you didn't." He's like, "Yess, I did." So we had no mic. It was banquet seating, like a, like a wedding. And we had I I just did this thing where. I opened for him. I just walked around to the tables telling my jokes to tables. Like it was the, it was the worst. <laughs> oh was the God. Worst. Just bombing at this like part. It was so bad. Dude, looking back, it's like, why? I was so happy and I love comedy, but it's like, why did I ever, how, why did I go through this? Why didn't I quit? I know. The first why day. I, I, think, yeah. I think all the time. Why didn't I quit? Like now I'm happy. You know, I think we're happy. We're doing good. <laughs> I guarantee be. you a lot of people don't come back from this. Maybe not a lot, but there's going to be a lot of comics who don't come back from this. And just I like, agree. Oh, that was nice. I don't know why I put myself through all that. That was too – I love seeing my family. I'm never going back to New York again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, of course. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think a lot of people are leaving New York and they're not coming back. That's right. it. Right. Not just not getting back into stand-up, but just not even coming physically back to New York. Dude, Which if you like, lose that's it. That's crazy. <laughs> Man, the Zoom etiquette is really we're all learning it. <laughs> it's really really good for a while. Then I just I heard you talking as I was talking. I was like, oh, let me stop so you can talk. Oh no, it's good. It's so funny because you don't know which wave is cresting, you know? You know? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, what were you saying, Sean? No, I was just saying, like, the, it's pretty crazy if you don't come back to even live here if you lived here. You know? Yeah. That's true. Well, imagine they, like, you put it, you're like, you, when you were doing comedy in the beginning, when you were making 10 grand tops to live and you put a down payment on an apartment and then you had to forfeit it because you couldn't make money and you had to go back home. It's like, you're not coming back. No. I don't think a lot of people are coming back. No, I think you're right. They'll just be online comedians who uh, do better than us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who make a living. More, more Instagram accounts. Yeah. Of, like, it yeah. is like, you know, uh, influencers. I don't think I'm going back to regular podcasting. It's like people are going to be like, hey, you want to come do my podcast? It's like, yeah, I'll see you in my office. I only Zoom now. Yeah. Like this, dude, I remember doing podcasts. First of all, it's great. Like I, you know, I don't pay people, but it's like, it's crazy the amount of podcasts we do for free as guests. And then you get on a train for an hour, do that. They don't laugh at anything you say. Don't let you talk. Then you take a train ride home. And it was four hours. I didn't even get a fucking t-shirt. No, I'm zooming for the rest of my life. You want me on? Sure. I'll be in my underwear. Fucking, I got the pro membership. I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. Just so we're all clear, he's talking about Tuesdays with Stories with Joe List and Mark <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know, I only do podcasts now with people I love. What? I only do podcasts now with people like I love to be around because it's just like it's you're asking way too much of a commitment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Except when we're zooming because this is great. <laughs> well, let's go. Let's go to today's matchup. I'd love. Oh to right, talk right. About it. Oh, I right. tried to. I tried to bite as much time as I could because I you know, only I got to watch well, clips on the movie. From you, uh, this was a Greg Stone idea, actually, Greg. I, I, I know. Great idea. And I do have stuff to say, but I have my opinions about why I like one more than the other. Uh, the matchup today, Andy, would you like to tell the, the audience, the defenders, what the matchup is? Absolutely. Today's matchup, which Greg will be defending, the savage Steve Holland 1986 picture, One Crazy Summer. And uh, I'm taking the opposite stance. I don't know where you lie, Shawnee. I think you're with me, though. I am defending the same director, Savage Steve Holland's 1985 picture, Better Off Dead. Better Off Dead. I'm on the Better Off Dead camp. As am I. I, uh, I would love, I, since Greg is the guest, I would like to give him the opening remarks about why he thinks One Crazy Summer is better than Better Off Dead. But I want to preface this just to make you feel better, Greg, since you're, I don't want you to feel ganged up on I wrote on Facebook, uh, Better Off Dead versus One Crazy Summer, and it wasn't unanimous. It wasn't all Better Off Dead. It was a lot of One Crazy Summers. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I think uh, where it's going to really boil down for a lot of people is how old you were when you saw it, because you get emotional connections. These, to me, these movies also were like, I love, I would love John Cusack growing up. He was, I even suggested doing this because like, I love him so much. I was like, oh, I can do this all day, but it's like, oh. I haven't seen this movie in 25 years. I just didn't realize how long it's been. But uh, this, yeah. you, you're right about the age thing, and and we're close in age. But I'm, we're, me and Andy are older than you. I want. I think we all have a shared affinity for this. What, like, I don't think people, younger people, realize how important John Cusack is. Yeah, like, crazy. Tell them. Explain to people why John Cusack is so important. Dude, he was the everyday loser kid. Although you look at him, he's like, "You're way too good looking." Like he's so good looking, but you, yeah. he didn't play that. Like he yeah. played that. He was the nerdy guy who girls didn't really like. Who was taking one swing to hit a home run to get the the, the woman he's you know fawning after, and uh, he played that role in everything. He played. He kind of played us, the nerdy little skinny shy guys. And it always worked the time. He always got the girl in the end, so it gave you hope. You were like, oh, I can get, I can be happy. Except to say anything. They don't end up together and say anything. Oh, I'm pretty sure at the end, he, it's heartbroken and they just end. And I, I, that was like the first movie I ever saw where I was like, yo, does he not get the girl at the end? No, I'm pretty sure he does it. Together, dude. Mm. Yeah. You might be right. (laughs) I think you're right. He travels with her. To go study in her program, he's going to do jujitsu. It's absolutely a happy ending. Jujitsu? Yeah, remember he was no ahead of his time. Not karate. Kickboxer. Oh, kickboxer. Well, the the thing about him is, I think he takes the nerdy, the nerdy, like he takes it to a level where he makes it cool. It's almost like before being nerdy was cool, he was a cool nerd. He was, and then Weezer came out and made it. Weezer, I argue, started emo, started (laughs) nerds being cool. It was all started with Weezer, in my opinion. Holly, the song? Um, that album, just the Blue album. That the Blue album, album he talks yeah. about having action figures in his garage 
It was like the first thing that ever made nerds cool. But I would argue maybe John Cusack was really in that river first. He, they were probably inf- influenced by John Cusack. We could do a side podcast about what happened to fucking Weezer. <laughs> 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 what is wrong with Weezer these days? Um, but, but no, I think when it comes to John Cusack, like the earliest that you see him be that guy and it's a very bit, it's a bit role is in 16 Candles. He's super geeky. It's him and his brother. And uh, they're friends with Anthony Michael Hall yep. in 16 Candles. And like, they help I don't even remember. the pictures of the girl. Remember that? Yes. No, I have to rewatch it. That's oh, crazy. Oh, yeah, he plays the, the brother. And then the evolution of him just being this, like, it's like he's just a cool nerd. Like, it's really, yeah. like, it's, 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 it's a big deal. Like, you, like you, you're right. You, you identify, identify him with him when I was a kid watching all these, all these movies. And then it, like, goes, and then, like, what happened was, career-wise, he was kind of fucked when he was, like, probably in his late 20s or something, he was doing all these, like, these, like, bogus, like, no frills, like, bad movies, like, Money for Nothing and a couple other things. Con Air. What? That's just good. Con Air was probably later in his career. Oh, Con Air was later. That's when he kind of came back. Uh, Gross Point Blank, Blank, I think, was, like, uh, Gross Point Blank. That's a great movie. Actually, that's around the same time as Con Air. That's 97 as well, if I'm... And then you have High Fidelity, where he's back to being like the grown-up version of that when guy. That was good. From the and 80s. it was great. And he's so fucking cool in the movie. Like, it's so cool. He yeah. was too cool. He yeah. was too, maybe it was High Fidelity where he doesn't end up with a girl. He, I don't remember. Yeah, uh, he a, does. He marries Beth in the end. Uh, no, I don't remember. He her, I don't think, does he? Yeah, they get engaged. Oh, yeah, right. High Fidelity. Yeah. Fun fact about One Crazy Summer, it was the uh, debut, uh, movie debut of Jeremy Piven, who was also best John friend. Cusack's roommate. And his best friend. I they're didn't know they were best friends. They're both from Illinois. They're both oh, from I Illinois. didn't know that. They're both from, um, what's the name of the town, Andy? Do you know? I do not know. Evanston, Illinois. They're both from Evanston, Illinois. Evan like, they, were, Illinois. Like, they were like close buddies for a long time. I don't know if they're still friends or not, but they're, they were friends... That that's why like look up the movies that he's in a lot of Cusack movies. All right, I didn't realize well, that since Pivot. since the movies are essentially uh, winter and summer movies, yeah, then they mirror each other very well. We could break it down a little bit further by saying, uh, I guess I like I prefer Lane Meyer uh, to uh, Hoops in Better Off Dead, Crazy Summer. Yeah. What I want to know is why didn't they just make both movies Lane Meyer movies? It should have been. It was a sequel. It, it was clearly a sequel. Yeah. It was the summer of Better Off Dead. It, I, they should have. Well, it was also, um, I also read a thing when, is it Savage Holland? What is his name? Savage, Savage Steve Holland. Holland. Cusack didn't get along with him in Wild Crazy Summer because he didn't like, because uh, Better Off Dead didn't do well. So then yeah. after... Better Off Summer did well. They started kind of like, he started kind of going a little easier on him or some shit, but they still don't talk, which is crazy. Wait, so One Crazy Summer didn't do that well? No, Better Off Dead, Better didn't, off do dead that well. didn't do as well. Yeah, I think John Cusack was like, oh, it made me look dumber than I thought it was going to come out as. And then after One Crazy Summer, he's like, I'm never going to talk to you again. But I think he's gone back and been like, oh, it became such a cult hits. He's been like, yeah, I'm, I appreciate that people love the movies. Yeah, but who blames the, like, who yeah. knows what the movie's going to do? You can't blame. I think the other thing is that the thing that I hate to say is you hear stories about like Cusack being half an asshole maybe at points. And maybe. it's like, yeah, that's kind of an asshole. It's like, dude, he's the director. He's part of the whole machine. He could blame you just as well. Like, yeah, he, right, right, right. He, he's your yeah. fault. You're, not, you're not funny enough in the freaking movie or something. But the fact of the matter is he's, ama- he's great and, he, and he's good in a, he's like a good like, Good, a good like uh, teen movie leading man. He just never. He did, it just didn't get to that next level where he like was a leading man. Like when he got older. Well, yeah, that's the thing, right? I mean, like some people don't get big until they're older. Like he just had his heyday young, and he did really well. He did a ton of fucking movies. We all know his name. You know, people know the name. So yeah. he did well. Um, I'll tell you what, also, though, he had a funny turn. Kind of not even that. He's not even an old man, but had a later career resurgence. So I think. Hot Tub Time Machine is very funny. Oh, I'm yeah. He's great. And both I of think them he's great. great both, both of them. One yeah. of the last good, the last good comedies. That and uh, the other. Did you see the guy? I just watched The Other Guys last night. Okay. The Other Guys Man, is great. That movie is so fucking funny. You know it's out of that? control. What? Uh, Dumb and Dumber was on yesterday, too. I think I can make the argument that Dumb and Dumber is the funniest movie 
uh, in the past twenty in the past twenty five years. That's a good, good argument. Your movie. Good I'll have to think about something to uh, attack Dude, you. It's Do you know what? So good. Ace Ventura 1 was on today, which you'll notice there's a ton of people who always pick the side of Ace Ventura 2, which makes me furious, and now I know why. It's because Ace Ventura 1 is so rampantly homophobic, which I didn't realize. <laughs> it's just like the whole, the whole crux of the movie is that it's bad to kiss a man who's a woman, and it's, yeah, like, right. it's like, which is wild. Uh, so I think people don't want to Tats himself of that, but yeah, Jim but Carrey is out of fucking control in that movie. He's hilarious. That's not every gag in the movie, and screw those people. They laughed in '93. Relax. Sure, right. it was a different time. It was a different time. We weren't there yet. And and Ace Ventura One was a super low budget movie. Like it was, it was made for like no money. Yeah, the story was that like that script was going around Hollywood as a joke, and people were like, "Oh, this is the worst movie script ever." And they offered it to Jim Carrey, and he just brought it. Like the script was garbage, and he just fucking you know, patented it right through. Yeah. General so patent. One crazy summer. Why do you prefer that over better off dead? Um, I think, well, you know, I'm a summertime guy. Uh, I also think growing up. <laughs> That's true. I like a summer. We call the cool breeze that too. Summertime cool breeze. Cool breeze, baby. Yeah, man. It's just a great time to be alive. I remember uh, just, I think I just, um, they steal his Ferrari at the end, and they build it into a boat, which is impossible. That's so fun. <laughs> but they took the guy's they, Corvette or Ferrari. Engine, they take the whole back of the car and put yes. it in the thing. So Not the engine. <laughs> yeah. License plate and all, and lights. And in the guy exploding never... back end of a boat, which the, the ability to do this is insane. For high school kids? I'll tell you one thing about One Crazy Summer is that it's a great bad guy named Chet is a great bad guy. Chet. Named. Uh, I give the I give the better bad guy name to Roy Stalin in Better Off Dead. Roy Stalin. Oh yeah, that's pretty wow. Really I, dictator. <laughs> when I was looking this up, the names in this movie are insane. The names of the characters. Uh, let's oh, yeah. see. I don't know what what Better Off Dead is, but we have uh, Hoops McCann. Hoops McCann. Okay. <laughs> Silly George <laughs> Calamari. Egg Stork. Bobcat. Bless, Bobcat plays a guy named Egg. Stork. Yeah. Uh, Squid Calamari. And there's Aki Aki or something. Ak Ak. Ak Ak. Yeah. Clay Stork. Bosco the dog. And Bosco. then someone called Graduation Orator, which I don't know what that guy, who would name their kid that. They, uh, uh, they went like really absurd because even the high school is called you. Generic High School. Generic High School, which I didn't notice till today when I rewatched a bunch of clips. Yeah. Generic. Yeah, I rewatched it today too, and it's called Generic. Generic high school. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, the little girl, the one who slaps the girl in the back with the dog. That always it, freaked me out, by the way. I was going to mention yes, that. Yes, that was horrifying. Was that, it scared the shit out of me. But yeah. For, for those who are not watching, the girl, they say if, if you hold, the girl's making faces, and the lady says, ah, if someone smacks your back. When they're doing that, it'll stay like that forever. And they did, and they looked just like the kid. They looked like the people from the Twilight Zone. Terrifying. Where everyone's so, horrifying. The crossing guard is the mom from Better Off Dead. Yes. A lot of is, crossover. But is that little girl the voice of uh, from The Simpsons? What, Yearly Smith? You mean Lisa? Who is in, uh, who is in uh, uh, Legend of Billie Jean? That's, 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 your, no, that's not her. Oh, because if you look at her face, she looks so much like her, but like a young kid version. kind of resembles her, but first off, she's way, she was way older than when that movie came out. Yeah, that's like, true. Girl, like ten years old, not even. And Yardley Smith, and like, because Legend of Billie Jean is like, uh, it's around <laughs> six months that. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. She looks way. She looks different than that. Yeah, but, but uh, no, that's not her. Also, I hate to do another aside, but you saw Legend of Billie Jean. Yes, of yeah. course. This is like one of my favorite movies of all time, and no one knows it. I know it's, it was like an HBO uh, repetitive. Uh, yes. Show. Yes. Yeah, I think people yes. already know it very well. Uh, the whole Pat Benatar. Yes. Uh, it was the first crush of my life. Cheesy 80 movies, 80s movies of, of, of uh, ever. I argue it's not cheesy. I argue that it's a great movie. Are you kidding me that it's not? When's the last time you watched it? Pretty corny. I loved it. Uh, it could be updated I, a little I, bit. No, I, wanna, I, wanna, I should rewatch it if it's on the streaming. I rewatched it. It's got some 80s cheese to it, but it's a great movie about like 
You, would you remember the plot? It's, you mean fair is fair, Mr. Pass. And yeah, then, <laughs> that's not cheesy. Fair well, not everybody. Fair. Not everybody's a great. You know, you're, th- these are real people here. She's these aren't Joan actors who with the great lines, <laughs> huh? There's the, the, she's Joan of Arc all of a sudden because yeah, exactly. they want to pay for a moped or whatever the fuck. Oh, he, didn't uh, he tried to rape her, and she went on the road. Oh, that's as right. fugitives. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He forgot. He tried to rape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I forgot. But they didn't think that was a strong enough plot for the movie. So they're like, ah, how about stole a scooter too? Because in the eighties, they're like, rape. Yeah, who gives a shit? No one's going after that. It was like you could redo that movie today, and it would be like a female, like strong, great Power. movie. Uh, yeah, it's a great movie. It. They should remake it. They make you like a uh, like a vigilante. I wanted to rewrite it as a TV series. You should. We've had, uh, like the yeah. A-Team, but it's this girl. We've had two subtle nods already really to Seinfeld. What did you say, Andy? We've already had two subtle nods to Seinfeld. Can you name them? I know one. Uh, um, in One Crazy Summer, Maestro, the maestro's in it. He's the bad guy. Oh, I wasn't even going to say that, but that's a third. I was going to say Bosco is the dog's name in One Crazy Summer, which is also George Costanza. ATM code in Seinfeld. And of course, the legend of Billie Jean, Helen Slater, the character, the main star yeah, of yeah. Legend of Billie Jean, is uh, uh, Jerry. She's a Jerry Seinfeld hit and run. He tries yeah. to date her. He doesn't actually become her, his girlfriend. And he sneezes and he goes, You're so, so good. good looking. Oh, that was her? Yeah, that's Helen Slater. Helen Slater, Helen Slater was the first love of my life in Legend uh, of Beijing. Not related to Christian Slater. We've talked about Yes, this they're related. That's her sister. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Uh, no, it's not. Dude, I researched this. I will bet this. you 20 bucks. Are you sure you This is Corona. I'm not betting money. <laughs> I don't have any left. I'm 99% sure. The only reason I'm not sure is because you guys are so confident. Hold on. But yes, I'm 100% sure. I'm looking it up now. <laughs> I'm also looking it up. Who can get there first? Because they were both a legend of Gene. Uh, here, both, here we go. Both she and Christian Slater achieved early success playing brother and sister in the legend of Billy Jean, leading many to believe they were real life siblings. Although they share the last name, they are not in fact related. Ooh, That's great. fake news uh, website. Ninety bucks Her, each. Not, it's on Google. Her real name it's is on Google. You might be Her right. Her real name Her is Ellen Rachel Schlachter, and she was born in Massapequa. Wow, man, I'm so upset right now. My whole life I've been telling people that. Yeah, dude. I, I looked it up a long time ago, and I was shocked that it wasn't the case. Dude, before she cuts her hair in Legend of Billie Jean, and she's walking around some of the, those bikinis, ha cha 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 man. ha cha 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 The short hair is so hot. That started, oh, my God. That's that really yeah, bringing me no, in. I liked her with the short hair. hair. More Billy than Jean, if you catch my drift. That's well, I like a little more Billy. <laughs> so, Greg, you you know you keep going, you keep going off the rails here. I need you to give me your reasons why you. I, I know. Over, over. My reasons are is I like Better Off Dead better, but I fucking said the text wrong. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> this is me just trying to avoid the argument. Well, um, we can do it this no, way. No, I love both movies. We can put them side by side because they both follow the similar plot structure. Is that there's something up for grabs, and you need to achieve or do this. To make sure everything's it's, okay in the it's end. It's the same exact story. It's the same exact, exact movie. Structure. It's literally it's, just it's summer vacation. Little, it's, 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 and it, it's even, it'd be great for now because it's dealing with like taking down rich kids, which is always right, the best. Right. That's the best 80s plot ever. Yeah. So even, let's go through it this way. I'll moderate this. We can go uh, better girlfriend. You've got Cassandra Demi Moore. Ooh. You've also got Beth, but then you have Monique in Better Off Dead. By the way, Beth. Same girlfriend as uh, um, in Fast Times is Ridgemont High from Brad, although she plays Lisa. Same girlfriend, breaks up with him senior year of high school. I'll tell you this much. I like Monique better because it was like this like sexy French thing going on. But uh, Beth has that quintessential 80s movie girl, like rich guy girlfriend. Absolutely. Her. And she's, go- she's like beyond, like that is like blonde? the blonde. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, she was so hot in that bathing suit. Oh my god! It's crazy. And, and the, but the weird thing about, about one crazy summer is she just likes uh, hoops right away. Like she just goes right for him. Like <laughs> yeah. she's actually like way more mature than everybody in the movie. Like, yeah. <laughs> young to me more though, man. I got to give it to her if we're just going looks wise. Well, yeah, and the staying power. But you have that like you know, but like she has the the 
the advantage of having you know who she is after that movie. What the, the fact what Beth has is like oh my, it's almost like Sloan Peterson from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which I also just rewatched. Where I'm like, oh my god, I'll put Sloan Peterson up against any actress <laughs> ever because of how what? much I had a crush on her as a kid. What happened to Sloan? She still she acts and in? stuff. She just you know, she's only 52 years old. She was 19 in Ferris Bueller. Oh God. But she is, oh my God, how much do you love her in that fucking movie? Sloan. Yeah. Oh. All right, let's do this. Better uh, side characters. This one. Well, I didn't get the answer. Oh, yes. oh my. Oh, yeah. I want to say Demi Moore. I like Demi Moore because she had that raspy voice and it made her sound like a smoker. It was cool. It was like and a she, tough chick. And she did play music. Yeah. Demi Moore. I've never heard yeah. it pronounced Semi Tractor Trailer. <laughs> uh, uh All right. Better uh, side characters. You've got uh, Charles DeMar, who has some of the greatest lines in comic history in Better Off Dead. Maybe one of my favorites of all time when, uh, in the beginning of the movie when Lane is trying out for the K-12, for the ski team, and uh, he brings Beth and Charles DeMar, uh, Booger, as we all know, from uh, Curtis Armstrong. Curtis yeah. Armstrong, yeah. He's standing next to uh, Beth. A uh, quick side fact about Curtis Armstrong is an expert on Harry Nilsson, the singer. He's an Really? Uh, Interesting. Harry Nilsson expert. But he goes, uh, Roy Stalin comes down. He goes, all right, which one of you would like to hold my keyboard? And Beth puts her arm in the air. He goes, you'll make a fine little helper, won't you? What's your name? And Charlie goes, Charles DeMar. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It's perfect. I would argue that Bo- Booger was in both movies. He is. is. So which was he better in? He's better As the sweet dead. best friend or dead. the he was way funnier and better off dead. Yeah. But he was more heart wrenching to see them do that. He never really acted like that in any other movie. You're he skiing, was more of a sweet guy. He's skiing on one ski is a legendary line. Yeah. He's skiing on one ski. <laughs> Do you think all of the mountain is cocaine too? He was like, "How much is all this worth?" It's like it's snow. It's not cocaine. Pure snow. <laughs> you imagine the street value on this. <laughs> he's a better. Let me ask you this. Uh, Better, better absurd animation. Better off dead gets it with the burger singing. Everybody wants some. That's good, but I would say I know. one crazy. That thing. One crazy summer has more of it, and it was in direct response to uh, Siskel and Ebert panning Better Off Dead. So there's these two guys at the end that get, like get blown up or something, and it's literally they drew uh, Siskel and Ebert as some kind of like rhinos or some bullshit. <laughs> Oh my and they God. kill him at the end. What is it with this bitter director of this movie? Like getting so mad. It's like Savage his name's oh, Savage. It's goddamn get Savage. Get yeah, maybe movies get panned on a daily basis. It's like relax. Not savages. It's not funny anymore. How he followed that formula. He's got uh, you've got the genius little brother in Better Off Dead, and then you've got the little sister with Bosco in One Crazy. Yeah, City. yeah, it's the same oh, shit. It's the same fucking movie. And also, it's got it's got Rick Ducommon in it, who is like, uh, like he must have been like thirty in One Crazy Summer. Who is that? <laughs> be like eighteen. He's his friend that he graduates with in the beginning of the movie. The guy. I don't in, remember. In, the guy who's in. Um, he's in the Burbs, and he's in. Uh, yes. You would know him if you saw him. And he's in uh, Groundhog Day. He plays the guy. He's like, I'll just put that anywhere, pal. And the guy drops the dishes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the same guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Better he's, off dead. Okay. he's also a stand-up from Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I think he's dead now, though. I think Better Off Dead, it gives you uh, more payoff in callbacks, too. You've got the uh, Where's My Two Dollar Kid. That that's, kid's great. That's what I wanted to say. Like, One Crazy Summer doesn't have as, as legendary the scene as Two Dollars, the Two Dollar gag back and forth. Hey, right. Who dies a horrible death? I'm pretty sure he flies <laughs> off the side of a mountain in a bicycle, <laughs> all because he's trying to get his job done with the two bucks. Well, one of the best things about Better Off Dead is when he comes to his house, he goes, Jimmy, hi, my grandma got run over by a bus full of nuns. And I couldn't, he's like, two dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was my grandma, my grandma dropped acid. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, no it's kind of right? right now. Also, <laughs> Ricky is great. The kid from Head of the Class, where the fat kid Ricky is great in Better Off Dead. Oh, I will say yeah, this. this. Another uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Better Off Dead connection. Same exact science teacher, Mr. Vargas and Mr. Kleber. Same exact Whoa. weirdo science teacher. It's his, an- his name is Anthony Schiavelli. He's the guy in uh, Ghosts where he teaches Patrick Swayze how to move inanimate objects. Oh, yeah, he's great, that guy. He's a weird-looking guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. What, uh, uh, 
does he try to kill himself in the movie? Does he try to hang himself in Better Off Dead? He does, but it's like, he's going, wait a second, Lloyd. He's like, this is death. This is serious. He's like, I haven't even been to New York City yet. And he's got the electrical cord around him, but then his mom is so oblivious. She's vacuuming, <laughs> hits the door open, and it sends him flying out. And so he's actually hanging himself. By what accident. a dark joke. His mom, the mom character in this is, I mean, in Better Off Dead is way better. She's great. And the father, too, has some legendary comedic lines that you don't pick up on until, like, the fifth time you've watched it. He's great. Greg, any retort? It's hard to defend a movie that I clearly remember the other one way better. Um, no, I like, I don't know. I'm a summer I just keep going. I'm a summer guy. I don't know, man. I'm a summer guy. This <laughs> still can't beat me. <laughs> like, they have this weird, it's funny because some of the things, like, you don't know if they're intentionally funny in One Crazy Summer, like, well, they, one of the things was actually was was when she asked him for popcorn, and then he and then he he, he, he brings her back a giant like plastic huge uh, bag full of popcorn, and I'm like <laughs> it's stuff like that that like throughout the entire movie. It was a little too much. Yeah, there's some funny- stuff in When Crazy Summer though too, like when uh, he listens to the lobster getting boiled, like that's some dark shit. Yeah. Oh, I mean when he like loves it. Yeah, he enjoys it to the sound of them screaming. He also kicks the dog in the face. Yeah, totally. Yeah, he full on, like, punts the dog. Let's go! Yeah. I will give one of the scenes I laughed hardest at when I was a kid was when Egg got the Godzilla costume and went through the whole uh, rich people party. I lost my mind watching that when I was a little kid. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And the smoke's coming out of his mouth because someone threw a cigarette in there. Why yeah. would you be scared of that costume? Why would you be scared? Like, this is clearly a guy. Did you think a little Godzilla really broke into town? I the 80s, everyone was so gullible. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it was such, a more, such an innocent time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, uh, in one crazy summer, you have the, uh, the regatta race, the boat race, to decide oh. if uh, she can keep her house or not. And then the classic... Better off dead, you've got the ski race of the K-12 for the captaincy of the ski team at Glendale High. I also want to argue, just to get back to the point of the $2 kid, the one crazy summer was the radio guy. Remember the guy who was just trying to win the radio contest yeah, it, it was and they just uncle. keep cutting back to him? Yeah, he just lived in a cabin. I didn't look it up yet. Is that John Grease? I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know. But, yeah, he finally wins it in the end, and then uh, – because of all the hijinks, he actually gets cut off when they're giving him his address. And they go, oh, we lost you. We got to go to the next caller. His lifelong That's mission. so fucked up. <laughs> so, Greg, have you just completely come around and, and uh, onto the better off dead side of things? I mean, it, I think it's a better movie. I think, uh, it had the, I, think they, I think it's a better movie. It is kind of surprising that Better Off Dead didn't do well on One Crazy Summer. I wonder if it's because One Crazy Summer came out in the summer and that was like the peak like summer movies and more people going to see it. Like, I wonder if that, because it's not a funnier movie. And, and There's Better so off much Dead, more in Better Off Dead. I also think Better Off Dead was a, uh, became like a cult classic. So it might not have done well in the theaters, but did probably well on VHS. And then everyone went to see One Crazy Summer because they loved it on tape. Here's a fun fact. From what I can tell, you can't find Better Off Dead anywhere. Really? I did a search for it on all the platforms because I was going to rewatch like an hour of it before we started. Uh, I and- got one for you. I found one. Where? I, I I just did like a Better Off Dead streaming free, and I found it, but it's a pain in the ass because it's like commercials every five minutes. Yeah, YouTube, you can pay on for it. Why, no, but yeah. you can find it on like a – I found like a free version. I have um, both on DVD still. I loved John Cusack. Do you watch your DVDs? Dailymotion.com has a free version of it, just so anybody out there wants to watch it. But uh, we haven't I, even scratched the surface of the, uh, the, the, the the two Korean race car drivers. Oh, you know what's crazy? I stand corrected. You can just watch it on YouTube for free. Oh, you have to pay. Because no, it'll only play the, it'll play you the preview. I use the new Wix. Sorry, <laughs> I was I was. You don't have to pay at all. It it just plays it. There's no- oh, for Better Off Dead, not One Crazy Summer. I didn't look up Better Off Dead. One Crazy Summer. They have an iTunes. Charles Demar. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think Better Off Dead's a little bit more of a payoff, though, even though the stakes for uh, uh, Cassandra's home are a little and also, higher. 
Yeah. Yeah, that, the, the stakes and the what, what was the stakes in Better Off Dead? It was uh, the car. Well, it's car. just the captain of the ski team, so it's obviously a girl's home or the captain of the high school ski yeah, team. The <laughs> I'll tell you one, which he didn't deserve. Monique that, was that, a cool uh, character. She was able to fix cars. They was able to fix the '67 Camaro, which so I hot. loved when I was a kid. Exactly, and that led him to finally beat the Korean drivers. One who narrated everything like Howard Cosell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lane so Maya. I, I think we're all in agreement, folks. Better off dead is just because here's the thing, man. Overall, even if you take it as two overall movies, using the formula, even using the formula, they do it better in Better Off Dead. Even though One Crazy Summer has higher stakes, the 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 setup of the movie is makes more sense because they even have like the training montage of him like there's no training montage in one crazy summer of them like learning how to sail like just know yeah. how to sail. you know what i mean like like it, it, it kind of like the better of dead follows the formula better of that like we're gonna beat the bad guy type of movie they dump a bunch of lobsters into a pool to attack First of all, I don't know lobsters to attack. A. Two, the chlorine would kill them. The chlorine would kill them immediately. I don't know how lobsters live, but I don't think in chlorine. And they don't grab your nose. That was the maestro because the maestro was, he's the one who killed the lobster and had fun doing it. Right. And I think it was supposed to be revenge for the lobsters getting back at him. Oh, that's nice. Good to see that they got their revenge. And weirdly, at the end, his son's boat has a lobster on the sail. So are they like a lobster family or something? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <There's> like a- <laughs> well, I They're think we can like- all agree that uh, Better Off Dead is Godfather and One Crazy Summer is Godfather too. Both great movies, <laughs> but the original is just going to edge it out. It's going to edge it out. Because that was, yeah, I'll even, I'll even tell you, like I, um, on my Facebook, uh, just to get a little bit of uh, uh perspective here i'll show i'll tell you like i'll go to my post i had about if it loads <laughs> like sean's vamping in that like sing-songy kind of dialogue you're like let me just go to my <laughs> facebook <laughs> here and it's just there to kill time go. just <laughs> buying some fruit i like it as a snack <laughs> <laughs> all right it's not loading right away so forget it but uh, I cruised by. I think I did a I did a pass on your post, and it, it seemed like Better Off Dead was winning by uh, not a strong margin, a but it definitely won. Not a blowout. Yeah. Not a landslide. So, so, defenders, let us know which one edges out the other one because you did good topics. Better girlfriend, better eighties movie girlfriend. I guess you could go on Crazy Summer. Better of uh, like movie songs. Better Off Dead. Better mom. Uh, better Off Dead. Better dad. Uh, better- Overall, as far as like the story, like let's get the rich guy, like I just said, better off dead. Um, one crazy summer, better cast. What would you say, better cast wise? Better ensemble. The same cast. What are <laughs> yeah. the same fucking cast in both movies? It's a little bigger ensemble in One Crazy Summer, but yeah, you have Curtis Armstrong basically playing the same character with a different name. And you even have who knows how many movies this guy did. You have well Taylor Negron who did who has yeah. so great in the movie. Also in Fast Times, and he's also in Punchline where he goes. Yep. He does a bit area rug. He goes Addy Was Bobcat? Was Bobcat and, and Bobcat Better did. Off Dead? Bobcat and was not in Better Off Dead. So you got one crazy Bobcat summer. You got Bobcat. One crazy summer. Yeah. He. Got, I think. I think the the winner of the whole thing is. I think that movie made him more way more well known than he was at the time. Sure, that makes sense. He wasn't in Police Academy yet, right? Yeah. I don't think so. No, I think it probably got on that. And that wow. was the point where he had to be that character, and then he got rid of it after a while. Yeah. But one guy we're not talking about that's also a stand-up and a really great stand-up from the 80s and 90s, Rich Hall, isn't it? Rich Hall and Taylor Negron play the guys at the service station. Right, who, right. Wait, who's the? I would say better villain. The blonde kid in One Crazy Summer, I think, might be one of the best 80s villains. He's great. Of all time. It's also, I think they, because that guy is a great character actor. I forget his name, but he's been in like Biloxi Blues and he's always good at playing like a villain. And they must have dyed his hair for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> who is the villain in Better Off Dead? Roy Stalin. Yeah. Well, like, who is the actor? Uh, I don't know his name, but he is the perfect. I mean, you got him out of central casting but, for a ski. <laughs> Ski hunky '80s kind of guy who played a dick. Uh, I mean, he initially kept Lane off the team because you had to be under the K-12 in 58 seconds. 
and he kept the stopwatch running. And then he turned to Beth. He goes, Betty stopped. He goes, ooh, just missed it. You know? <laughs> Villain and Roy in uh, Better Off Dead looks like he's 40 years old in Better Off Dead. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fine little helper. What's your name? Charles DeMar. <laughs> yeah, he'll kill me every single time. I got to okay, know who this guy is. We can come to agreement that uh, Better Off Dead edges it out. I don't even think it edges it out. I think it wins. It wins. Not, but not as much of a blowout that I initially would have thought. Uh, yeah, I came yeah, into this. Yeah, they're both pretty good. Oh, uh, I came into this going, this is going to be a bloodbath. Better off dead. Is, yeah, you know. and but One Crazy Summer has its and has its pluses and has its minuses. But, but I think of, like, even after talking about it for 45 minutes, when I think which one would I rather watch right now is Better Off Dead. Absolutely. Yeah. Like right now, right, like what would you rather watch right now? I mean, this is things because I'm pretty sure my text, I said better off dead. And then Andy did a switcheroo and I had to defend this movie I didn't love. I don't you know, want me to go to the archives? I will. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a better off dead guy. But I'm a summer guy. So they're both. But I'd rather, I'm going to watch better off dead when you get off the phone. Also, I'm going to go back uh, and prove to you that you're wrong before this is over. I think guys, Corona uh, is making its way through my body as well. So I'm, uh, I'm a weakened state. I'm at a weakened state. If, if you start coughing by the end of this podcast, when will you have Corona? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I go to the archives. I go, which one would you defend? You go, I have to watch them both. I have them on DVD. Really, summer versus winter. Summer. I pick one crazy summer. I'm yeah, I don't see summer. anything. You're I'm showing you. I'm showing no. you. All I see is a bright it's light. A there, Greg. You, know that, you cannot mess up that text you did watch you yeah. did say you go that's hard though i do love both yeah i do you, know, you kind of dipped in and out but your original pick was one crazy summer because i remember that i go all right let me ask sean which one he'll defend and when he said better off dead i go great we got a matchup and also better off dead like just way better title yeah Absolutely. way better also a very, morbid, a very morbid title for a movie from the 80s yeah well what's Craig, savage up to now is he make anything else I think he made a bunch of TV in like the 90s, and then I, I don't know what he does now. Let's find out. Hold on. Uh, this was nice having Greg back on the show, Sean, uh, but also nice doing it in a separate room because if you remember Greg's first appearance on the show, I uh, was down to the count with a uh, back injury, and uh, my, my back pills made my mouth very dry, and Greg asked for a sip of my pint glass of water. I, and went on to drink the entire thing as a <laughs> as a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. a, you're drinking somebody's water nowadays. That's attempted murder. I know. You can't be sharing cups anymore. But yeah, <laughs> so it's a great bit. The director goes. He's still working. Savage Steve Holland. He did. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go back to. Um, Oh, damn. Let's see. Do you think uh, Savage Steve Holland was a self-appointed nickname? That kind of sounds like one where it's like, hey, call like me Savage Steve. Yeah. I don't think his mom named him Savage. <laughs> no. no, but you know how... Well, his friends didn't call him that. Exactly. Yeah. Just like thing. people call me Home Run. No one's called me Home Run. <laughs> it, might, it might have been like he's just kind of a dick to work with. Because look at this. Better Off Dead, One Crazy Summer, The New Adventures, uh, Adventures of Beans Baxter. <laughs> Uh, how I Got Into College, Encyclopedia Brown TV series. How I Got Into College Hall. Stinks. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV show. He just did TV stuff at this. VIP, at Even Stevens, Lizzie McGuire. Wait, VIP with, was it VIP with, what's her name? Pam Pamela Anderson? Anderson? Dude, that was the hottest show ever. <laughs> oh, that girl with the short black hair was so hot. I don't even remember that. All right, was, boys. All right, see ya. That's it? Well, we're going to wrap up and sign off first, Greg. Right? It's not like you hang up a phone call. Oh, I was just going to leave the meeting. <laughs> oh, you, you must feel like shit right now. Uh, I feel like garbage. I'm sorry. I, I wish I could have brought a higher energy. No, you no that was fun, man. Um, you, uh, do you want to plug anything? Do some pluggies, Greg. I guess the Rad Dude Cast. I mean, comedy's dead. So check out my podcast, the Rad Dude Cast. It's, it's, it's really very funny. People love it. Where can People. we find you on uh, all the social? Oh, Greg Stone underscore uh, and just Greg F. Stone. You just go to gregfstone.com and all my shit's on there. Andy, Beautiful. how about you, buddy? Uh, you know me, gang. It's at Andy Fiore on all my social and andyfiore.com, but there's no dates up there. Well, you can go and see my dates and see what would have been. That's always fun, and they get sad about that. 
So uh, yeah, just reminiscing about shows in the past. <laughs> yeah, uh, just follow us here at Defend Your Movie and uh, chime in and rate and subscribe and do all that fun stuff. As we said, uh, if you listen to the bonus episode today, this or yesterday, since this is going to come out on Friday, Shawnee and I are going to move to a Tuesday Friday format to give you an extra bonus quarantine episode. So stay tuned for that and tell a friend. I. Uh, I'm at Shoney Time. Oh, Greg's in a now right now on the on the Zoom. Greg's on an island, which is great <laughs> for your Corona. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm at Shoney Time on Instagram and Twitter, and yeah, at Defend Your Movie. Uh, rate and review the podcast, just like Andy said. And I have a show on Sirius called Celebrated I do every week. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, give us feedback. Tweet at us. Which one would you have picked? What did you think of the matchup? What did you think of the topics? What do you? I, we were kind of we were a little bit all over the place. Let us know. Give us our feedback, and we appreciate you guys listening. Greg, thank you for doing this with your work. Thanks, Greggy. See you guys. Uh, thank you. Bye. We'll, we'll see you. We'll see you next week, right, Andy? Absolutely. We'll see you on Tuesday. Yeah, on Tuesday, baby. Later. Later.